Today, I want to show you guys the PQ formula for solving quadratic equations. But before that, let's review the classic quadratic formula, which is for the standard form of a quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Then, we can always use the quadratic formula to solve for x, which says x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Good. But it's just that sometimes maybe the a is equal to 1, then in that case, this formula might be slightly more intimidating than it has to be. But don't worry, that's what the PQ formula can help us out. And this right here is actually super cool because this might remind you of the cubic formula for a cubic equation. I do have a video on that, you can check that out, link will be in the description. But let's take a look right here. For the PQ formula, we are trying to solve a quadratic equation in the following form. I want the a to be 1, so we just have x squared. And then after that, we will have the plus, here is the p, and then times x. And then plus, here is the q, and that's how you should write q in math. And that's equal to 0. So, let's derive a formula for this particular form. To do so, let's first move this number to the other side. So we have x squared plus px, and then that's equal to negative q. And then we will have to think about what number to be added here so that we can complete the square on the left hand side. Well, what do I mean though? Let's take a look from a geometry point of view. This x square can be located like this. I have a length x right here and likewise here, and then I can draw a square. The area here is precisely x squared. So that takes off this part. Now next, we have p times x. We can also look at this as an area. But p is not equal to x, so maybe p is only like this much. Times x, OK. As you can see, we have a rectangle now. If we put this and that right next to each other like that. So what do we do? Well, here is how we can make it much better. Instead of putting down the whole p from here to here, let's cut this into just half of p. So here I will have just p over 2. And then, as you can see, this area here is just p over 2 times x. Okay, But I want px. Don't worry, I cut the half right here off earlier. I'm just going to put that right here. So I will have that p over 2 right here, and then x here. So this area is also p over 2x. Together, we still get this part perfect. And if you do it in this way, you can see that, hey, we are missing a corner. And what's that corner? It's a square right here. How, what's the area of this square? p over 2, p over 2. So I need to have p over 2 squared. So imagine if I just add the blue square right here, then I will complete the square. Yeah? So let's go back here. We will have to add p over 2 squared. And like always, whatever you do to oneself the equation, you do the same thing on the other side. And that's how we complete the square. Then, as you can see, on the left-hand side, we can factor it. And you know the factoring already. It's just x plus p over 2 times x plus p over 2. We can just write it as x plus p over 2, the quantity squared, just like that. Very nice. All right, now, as you can see, we have this p over 2 right here, right? We are going to keep that p over 2 right here. So I'm not going to multiply this out. I'm just going to keep it, but I'm going to write that down first. I think that's the traditional way that people present the formula. So let's write that down first, and then minus the q, like so. Then we can just take the square roots on both sides. And remember, to put a plus or minus, we have two solutions for the x. And then finally, we have x plus p over 2 equals this. We can just bring the p over 2 
to the right hand side. So ladies and gentlemen, x equals, we have the negative, and then here is the p over 2, and then plus or minus the square root, parentheses, and then here is the p over 2 squared, and then minus the q. So if this is the quadratic equation form, then you can totally just use this right here to help you out. Now, let me just demonstrate an example for this one right here. So now, let's go ahead and solve this quadratic equation again, because we have solved this one in one of my previous video by factoring and also the classic quadratic formula. But this number is a little bit too big, so it was not that great, right? Let's go ahead and give this a try. So right here, as we can see, we have the x squared. So that means the p will just be equal to 6. So p equals 6. Likewise, q is just that. So q equals negative 432. Then just plugging these numbers into the formula, x equals negative p, which is negative 6, over 2, plus or minus, open the square root, and then we have p over 2. That's 6 over 2, and then we square that, minus the q value is negative 432. Now we just have to work this out. Here, negative 6 over 2 is just negative 3, and then we have the plus or minus, and for the inside, let me just put this down right here for you guys real quick. 6 over 2 squared minus negative 432. This right here is 3, so this is 3 squared and then minus minus becomes a plus 432. This right here is equal to 9. And then this right here is equal to 432. You add, all together you get 441. Then that will be the inside of the square root. And of course, we'll still have that square root. Square root of 441 is 21. So this is negative 3 plus or minus, again, the whole thing here is 21. We have two answers, right? One with the plus, the other one with the minus. So let me write this down. x equals negative 3 plus 21. And the other one, x equals minus 3, and this is minus 21. Here, we get x equals 18, and here, x equals negative 24. If we're just looking at this quadratic equation, then we have two solutions. In that previous video, it was a geometry equation, that's why we got rid of the negative answer. But have a look, isn't this so much quicker? Okay, just real quick, when should we be using the PQ formula? As you can see earlier, P is an even number, so when we did P over 2, it turns out to be a whole number 3, so the inside is whole number, it's very nice. So that's the thing, if P is an even number, go for it with the PQ formula. If P is an odd number, then the trade-off is you will end up with a fraction inside of the square root. If you don't mind combining fraction inside of the square root, you can still use this.